Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Code of the Future and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create functions in Python. So as always, I'm going to put my glasses on and I'll move you onto the screen. Okay, so we're going to jump straight into PyCharm and I've created a Python file named functions. And this is where we're going to start doing our coding. So the first thing to mention is, you know, what is a function in Python? You know, what is it exactly? So instead of just talking at you, I'm going to talk, but write down exactly what I mean by a function. Just because I think this is a nice way of you understanding it a little bit more as if I write it down as well as speak it. So I'm just going to put up a comment here and say, so like in mathematics, and don't worry if you don't understand maths too well, this is just a way for you to understand how functions are related. So like in mathematics, where a function takes an argument and produces a result, it does so in Python as well. So what I mean by that is normally in math, say you have y equals x, it will take x as the argument and then it will produce y as the result. So that's a little bit of a way for you to understand, you know, how functions work in relation to something else. But very, very simply, and I'm going to put this in comments as well, because if I type it in Python code, it'll come up with a lot of errors. Now I'm just going to put this in comments. I'm going to say the general form of a Python function is, and I'm going to keep this in hashtags because I'll probably get a few errors if I don't. So we're going to start by saying def, and then we're going to say function name. We're going to have arguments within this. We're going to have a colon. Indentation as usual. Then this is going to be lines telling the, the function what to do to produce the result. And then the final bit is return result. Okay. And again, I'll put this in hashtags just so we don't get any errors in the code. So essentially what we do is we define using def a function name, which we want. We input our arguments and then within this function, we give Python some code so that it knows what it needs to do to return a specific result from this function. And then finally, we say return result. What's really worth noting in a function is you must use return and then, you know, whatever it is you want to return. So I'm going to do a real life example of this and we're going to jump straight in. That's just a general overview of kind of what form a function will take in Python. So let's consider producing a function that returns x squared. Now, if you aren't familiar with that notation, this little arrow up here just means squared. And obviously this is different in Python anyway, because it's two stars, but here I'm just writing it for simplicity. So, okay, let's consider a function that will return x squared. Okay, so let's first write def. And again, this goes orange because we, it knows we're defining a function, which is what we wrote here. Now our function name, we can write this as anything as long as it's one word. So let's say our function name is going to be squared. Okay. And notice how it goes into a, a you know, a lighter orange. So it knows that that is a function. Now we're going to say arguments, and this is just going to be one argument for the time being. It's going to be x because we want x squared. And then we're going to put a colon and we're going to enter. And notice that it's indented, which is what we need when we use a function. It must be indented. So let's consider, you know, how would we define a function that will return x squared? Okay. Well, let's say, okay, here we need to return a specific result. So let's say result will equal x, which is what we input into our function here. So if we just return x, all this is going to do is just return the x value, but we want x squared. So let's say x squared, and remember how you square something is by two stars and then a two, say if it was cubed, it would be three. So x squared. And then we're gonna say return result. Okay, now I'm gonna run this. And notice how nothing comes up. So you may think, well, we've defined it, why is nothing coming up? And that's because we haven't explicitly told Python what x is, you know, what x we want to square. Now, a very nice thing about functions is you can recall them. So I'm gonna say squared, and what x value should we choose to square? Let's say two, because we know it's four. Let's stick with some nice numbers to begin with. So at the moment, this isn't doing anything because we aren't asking it to print. Remember, if we want Python to produce something, then we need to ask it to print. So we're gonna just put print squared two. Okay, so now I'm gonna say run. Aha, four, perfect. I'm just gonna add a, a an extra line in there. Uh, PyCharm doesn't doesn't like the formatting, so I've just added an extra line. Perfect. 
four. Okay, we can change this to uh, ten. Okay, and click run. A hundred, perfect. So this function here works. What I'm going to say is, okay, well, say we don't want just one argument. Say we want to produce a function that returns x squared plus y squared. Okay, and what we will need to do is we'll need to factor in how many arguments. So we want to produce x squared plus y squared. So we'll need to consider two arguments, x and y. So in here, you're going to put x and then a comma and y. So you now have two arguments because that's what you want to consider. But instead of just x squared, we want to add y squared on the end. Okay, perfect. So what this function will do is it will take whatever x value we put in here and whatever y value we put in here and return x squared plus y squared, which is perfect. So just notice what happens if I was to just run this command without having assigned the y variable, without having put an extra argument in here. So we're going to click run. Aha, here we go. So something that's really worth pointing out is that don't worry if you get code that's red and it tells you there's an error because what you'll find in PyCharm, it will tell you exactly where the error is. So here it says line 17 and obviously we know this is line 17 here and it will say squared, which is what we've defined here, missing one required positional argument y. See? it tells you exactly what has gone wrong in your code. So we know straight away, oh, I haven't defined what the y argument is in this case. So if I was to say, okay, let's do 10 squared plus two squared. I'm gonna run this and we get 104, perfect. So again, you can create the most complex functions. You know, you can start dividing, you can start squaring, you can incorporate loads and loads more arguments. And that's what functions are really useful for is you can put anything into a function. I say anything, almost anything and it will return a desired output. So you might be watching this and thinking, that is incredibly maths heavy. My maths ability isn't that strong. It may be brilliant, but for those that you know don't have as strong a maths ability, I'm gonna show you an example now, which does not incorporate any types of maths. So we're gonna say a new function. Okay, I'm just gonna scroll down here. So a new function, and I'm going to say, okay, let's define. So we're gonna say def, which means define, and again, we need that at the start of any function. So we're gonna say def, and I'm gonna just put born, and you'll understand why I've put that in a minute. So I'm gonna put def and define the function as born, and then we're gonna say country in here. And obviously country isn't defined, you know, not, nothing's been done yet. We'll put a colon, and country is what we'll be inputting into this function. So we're then gonna say, okay, you can either say return print I am from plus country. Okay, so I'm going to explain what this is doing. So first we have to find the function born. We're going to input a certain value here and this has to be a string because we're not using, you know, math. It's, there's no longer any math involved. So we will input a string to say quote England for me. And then we're going to return printed I am from country which is what we've defined here now this plus allows you to add this string to this string so we're going to say okay well let's say born and i'm going to use the string and remember strings are by quotation marks because they're not numbers they're not integers anything like that i'm going to say string england so i'm going to say england and we're just going to add a space in here because again the formatting PyCharm doesn't like having one line on here instead of two. So I'm going to say this. And just remembering again, because this string, using this add, this add sign, will add this string to this string. And the issue is, if I was to print this right now, from would be attached to England, and there would be no space. So we can either put a space in here, or equally you could put a space in here and not one in here. So I'm just going to click run. There we go, I'm from England, perfect. So again, you can, you know, depending on where you're from, say if you are from USA, I'm from USA. Obviously, you might have to put the USA. <laughs> or equally, you know, I'm from France. And we'll click run. There we go, I'm from France. So this is an example of a function where you don't incorporate any maths, you know, no complicated maths. It's just simply adding strings together. And again, this is what's really worth remembering is this add here will add this string onto what is defined in here, which is this string here. 
I'm trying to keep these videos almost as easy as they can be for beginners. So that is functions in Python. I will be doing a video later on how you can incorporate functions with plotting graphs. My next video will be on plotting graphs. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. But that is the video today. We've learned about how you can create functions, how you can recall them, how you can change them and do ones that suit you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like, subscribe and comment and I will see you all in the next video.